Honourable Members, Madam Speaker. As the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Monk, kick of the regional parliamentary sitting in Gulu, the Committee on Infrastructure laid the Committee's report on the state of infrastructure in northern Uganda. But key among their findings is the state of both Karuma and Pakwaj bridges, where they say they've already developed huge cracks and have lived beyond their lifespan. The Committee noted with concern that Pakwaj bridge have been in structural cracks and abutments and failed expansion joints. This poses challenges to the performance of the bridge and may result into sudden failure unless possible defects are comprehensively established and corrected earlier. Members of Parliament from West Nile region tasked government to explain why major roads connecting to key districts of West Nile have not been worked on, yet they surface in the budget frequently. Pakwach Bridge is now for over 55 years. This calls for proactiveness so that we avoid death-threatening issues. Now that the road from Koboko, Yumbe to Moyo, Laropi is being done, I would expect Moyo, Yumbe and Koboko to at least benefit from five Thank kilometers you. of roads. Thank, Thank you. you. For the Lao region, there were demands for explanation on the Masindi Port at Cholibu Road and the dysfunction ferry that is on the major road now connecting the region from Lake Kyoga. Right Honorable Speaker, uh, Masindi Port Ferry is the oldest in the country and it is already outdated. So I would like uh, the Ministry uh, of Works to really consider this immediately because it is breaking down almost every day. The road that connects Doholo and Molata. This road, right honorable speaker, did appear in NDP3. This road was approved in a supplementary budget. I am not privy to the NRM manifesto, but I am alive to the information that it was in the NRM manifesto. It looks my understanding how this road has disappeared and never. Most of our roads are district roads and we made a petition to Ministry of Works to upgrade several district roads to national roads. It's now two years that has not happened. I want to recommend that the committee report is amended so that that is provided for. Ben Sonungam. President Yuweri Museveni arrives at Kaunda Sports Ground in Gulu amid his cheers from ministers and members of parliament to grace the Medan Regional Parliamentary sitting in Gulu. In his address, the president challenged northern region leaders and locals to get over the hangover of the war and get to work to be able to transform their community. Because many parts of Uganda have gone through war, massacre. The town was destroyed completely. There was not a single building left standing in Masaka during the, during the war with Idi Amin. So was Mbarara. Every, every building was knocked down. While responding to concern from MPs over money for compensation of war debts claimant, the president tasked the Office of Attorney General to explain the whereabouts of the money meant for the region. I have been hearing rumors that the money is not well used. It is taken by people who, don't, who are not known or things like that. So that's why I wanted to call a conference of elders from these areas and then we see how to move. We have agreed to pay this money. On the issues of development and poverty eradication, the president pushed for implementation of four acre model that support growing of coffee, fruits, food crops. All right, a very good morning to you and thank you so much for keeping it NBS Television. It's a media roundtable but when it comes to a Friday, definitely you know ours is talking about the events that have happened through the week and it's political, political, political all through. Um, the conversation regarding parliamentary regional sittings that had earlier on been announced by the Speaker of Parliament during the budget reading officially has now come to pass and has started, meaning clearly Parliament is going to be moving to the other different regions. Started off with the northern region in Gulu, that at Kaunda Stadium. That is done, should be finalized right now. Now we'll be going on to others. Also, away from there, the Forum for Democratic Change is still doing a lot of uh, shaking or is still giving us a lot of news to be able to cover. One, because after the 
um, the, the countrywide tours, as they termed them. The FTC Katonga Group said they would now come in a delegates conference and declare what the results of the questionings, the results of the consultations were. And in part of that was uh, a demand that the FDC be dissolved because many of the Katonga faction group members are actually founding members of the Forum for Democratic Change. That didn't rattle the Najanankombi faction well. It never rattled them well. But well, it's still on. And we saw them this week going ahead to take it further, not further, by registering another political party. That and much more is what we'll be delving into on the Media Roundtable. Allow me right now get to introduce to you my panel this morning. And in no particular order, I will start with uh, Derek Wandera, uh, who is a senior journalist here, News 24-7 coming through. And uh, are you a journalistic nomad as well? I am a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> I a know where this coming a nomad, from. Good a, nomad, a nomad normally moves from one place to another looking In search for, for water, water and pasture. And pasture. Your water and pasture could be the news stories themselves. Probably. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> Good morning. Say hello to our viewers, <laughs> Derek. Good morning, uh, Mildred. Good morning, our viewers. Thanks for having me, and it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Derek, for sparing time to be with us. Angelo Izama Opiaya, at least I got that one very right, and I'll forever <laughs> get it right. Uh, Angelo Izama is, I think the word veteran now suits properly in the shoes because he's no longer vet, but he is active. He writes. Uh, quite a bit, but now a little bit more interested in ensuring that we get as many investors into the country. He's a board member with the Uganda Investment Authority. A very good morning to you, Opi. Aya. Yes, Opi is just fine. Opi is fine, right? Um, okay. For sure. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks, Mildred. Thanks for having me and uh, good morning to our viewers. Good morning to you as well. Thank you so much for coming through. I do have Sa Simon Muyanga Lutaya. He asked me to worry his put all his titles to his name. Sir Simon Muyangaltaya, a veteran journalist as well and a media trainer. Are you still in active journalism? Somewhere, somehow, like writing or? Oh, yes. I am the managing editor of SML News UK. Exactly. And I write on a daily. But I want, to, I want us to settle one th score, once and for all. The issue of calling me sir should be settled today. You don't need to say, he, he always tells me to call him, sir. Okay, what do you believe? Sir believe Simon I Muyang Galutaya. Do I believe? Good. Do, do you I doubt? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's keep it where it is. Good morning to you, sir Simon Muyang Galutaya. It's nice being here <laughs> with colleagues like Angelo and uh, Wandera. Uh, I want to welcome everybody to our discussion. I believe yeah, sure. it makes part of the public narrative many times when you live here you hear people comment mm. those in support and those oppose but whichever way they do the talkability is part of what we look for that yes. someone is able to follow up what you said and what you did and be able to comment and pick out i think i am i am here it's, it's a battle i imagine because uh, first as a teacher of literature i will want you to explain to me what you meant by I, 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 we will not start there. We'll I will start keep there. my nomad? job as the moderator of this show. I don't take questions. I ask the questions. Thank you very much, nomadism. Sir Simon. <laughs> What's nomadism? That's what I want to understand. What, which pastures and water is in a guru? Nomadism. This NBS must explain. Well, well, well. Arias Muchibi, Serun Joji, a senior journalist as well with us here. Seron Judge, do not mind your neighbor, but just a very good morning to you and say hello to our viewers as well. Thank you for making time. Thank you so much, Mildred. Yeah. I'm happy to be here with this, these distinguished guys. I know all of them. Yeah. Especially the sir. He's going to explain the knight and knighthood <laughs> and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Angelo. Music. Yes, Derek. Okay, but well, thank you so much for making it. And to you, our viewer, it's always a special one having you. And you can follow us up and follow the discussion on our social media platforms at NBS TV on X, uh, NBS Television on Facebook, and X Media Services. You can get me too at Mildred to Heise across all my platforms. Let's start it off from the regional parliament, uh, parliamentary sittings themselves. I think many people did not pay attention to the speaker's announcement, but, but this came out during the budget reading 
where she said, and the preamble to her statement was, because this is a people's parliament, we want to take it closer to them and make them feel, understand how parliamentary uh, work goes on and how we do legislate for them. And clearly stated that, uh, clearly stated the date and the venue where this was going to start, being Gulu City uh, on the date that it was, but also at uh, Kaunda grounds, and asked the president to grace the first regional parliamentary sitting to which he actually did yesterday addressing the parliament. But there's been two sides to it. Some thinking it's a great idea, it's a great opportunity for people to get to understand and come closer to the members of parliament, although the leader of opposition came up with a statement and said the opposition was going to be out because they weren't even involved in the planning processes, but it, it was also going to be an extravagant uh, kind of um, adventure for the nation. But others still believe that, yes, this is the right thing to do for parliament to go closer to the people. Angelo, I'd like to start off with you on... Even while the speaker mentioned this, what came through your mind? There are two opposing, there is the opposing and the proposing side thinking, it is very good, the others think, why can't you legislate? What new thing are you going to say and do in the regions that you cannot be able to do in Kampala? Well, my position is that more consultation is better than less. And the engagement of um, ordinary people with uh, their leaders uh, always leads to, to, uh, to better outcomes. So, uh, apart from the cost, the timing, the planning um, of these consultations. What's with the timing in itself? The cost, true, because mm. allowances and everything else. But what's with the timing and the planning in its case? So, oh, we have a teacher here. Mm. You know, when, when you are approaching an audience, you have to prepare them. Mm. Um, you know, I, I picked up my copy of um, Benjamin Odoki's book, A Search for National Consensus. It's a really good read because the effort taken to involve people, listen to their issues, um, canvas, not just um, those who will be attending the, the parliamentary sitting or watching them, but others who may not, you may not only have access to them. Um, invest in understanding different sections of society and their issues, um, and then roll that into a discussion uh, that could lead to legislation. Uh, that, I think, is what happened with the, the Constitutional Commission. And it is a dense and thoroughly um, done consultation with the Ugandan people that led to the 1995 Constitution. And I think it's a remarkable achievement that at that time, um, Ugandans were able to uh, not just access the commission but consult with their leaders and then build the uh, what eventually is now the cardinal uh, law. Mm. Now of course our parliamentarians, um, the current um, incumbents, they're dealing with multiple issues and not all of them will be settled um, in one sitting. Mm. The sitting is symbolic I yeah. actually passed. I actually passed through Gulu on on Sunday, so I saw the. It was like a big wedding, <laughs> a big <laughs> wedding tent, mm. uh, music, you know, um, and entertainment. And the spectacle is okay, but it's serious <clears throat> business of consulting because, you know, as as a, as a country, you know that um, not just the size of our population, but the challenges we face require like serious introspection. That's what I meant by the planning. Mm, I think mm. on the um, um, when the speaker and her uh, and the house decided they were going to do a regional parliamentary sitting, they should then have gone ahead and said, mm. "Okay, if we're going to Gulu, uh, let's engage the broader northern community. Let maybe send MPs there in advance, mobilize the local government, get student groups involved, uh, get religious groups involved, talk to the business community, at least get it, you know do it properly." There were some preamble activities, meeting of um, you know border border riders, market women, and opening up um, a few areas here and there. Or should that have been planned earlier as that's, well? That's ribbon cutting. Okay. Yeah, and those are like, so. That, so I think that it 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 should not simply be a performative uh, activity where you go and you say some nice things, because the fact of the matter is this consultation 
leads to legislation. Uh, anytime you, they exp MPs and the people express themselves in this way, there are consequences. Mm. So when you hear people say, okay, we want this road done, we want you to prioritize the health center, we think uh, taxes should, uh, on certain agricultural products should be low. If they vocalize these things and if it's done well, there are consequences, so it should be taken seriously. I don't think there's, there's been like, there's sufficient planning, and maybe this is the first of a series. Now that they've started regional parliamentary sittings, I think we're gonna see a lot of these types of engagements uh, in the future of parliament. Okay, mm. thank you so much. Simon, uh, Sir Simon, what do you think about these parliamentary sittings? Because you mentioned something interesting, and this is literally what some people have been referring to, that for some members of parliament, this is a tour kind of opportunity, get to know the other parts of Uganda, because after all, not many of them have crossed Karuma or even crossed Kafu going towards that northern side of Uganda. Is that the same kind of thinking you have for these sittings? Uh, first, I... I, I, I... I want to agree to that. I will speak different about these parliamentary sittings because uh, three weeks ago, mm. I was in Gulu. For the um, first time I, in your life, you can for say the first, that. I can say that also. Yeah. Uh, I uh, can say that. For the first time in my 46 years, I stepped in Gulu uh, three weeks ago. Oh, wow. And I had an opportunity to spend a record 14 days mm. in the area. Mm. I want to tell the public that Gulu is a beautiful city. Sure. Slightly more beautiful than Kampala as of today. Mm. The place is clean. Cleaner. Cleaner than Kampala. Mm. The mm. place is free. You see total recovery from the war ravages. It's a promising city. You see life in Gulu. I lived there, and I had an opportunity to visit their major investments. There are things that we do not know are happening in Gulu. One of them that I visited was the Atiak Sugar Factory. Despite a few challenges in its economic mode of development, because when you visit Atiak, you realize there was a mistake made, that the investors wanted the sugar cane factory there. First built the sugar, the, the sugar factory before planting the sugar cane. Mm. So very soon they, later they crashed without supply and then went back to the right model. Plant enough before you have the factory. I also visited a place called Ayuwarali. Ayuwarali is in Palabek, that side of, 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 of Lamu, I think. That's Lamu district. Where there's a sugar plantation of around 5,000 uh, 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 hectares. Then I visited another place that is doing plantation or agriculture where they have more than 3,000 hectares of rice growing. And then I came to a place called the Acholi, uh, the, the Acholi Industrial Hub. These hubs that have been uh, constructed and supervised by Ibareche, the Ibareche of, of State House. And I found a group of learners. I found a lot of work that people are doing in terms of craftsmanship, of the simple things we need, the, in Gulu now, they manufacture their own wheelbarrows. You no longer need to import that. They have learned that. And these are people who have been coming from all over Choli. I also visited another logistics uh, center that is more, almost more beautiful than the old Entebbe airport. There is a terminal there, a logistics terminal there in Gulu that are not known. So because of that, my thinking about these regional sittings is different. All right. I loved it when I realized that nobody would have told me the story better than what I saw. Mm. So mm. the best way you can understand the regional sittings is by applying physics, not politics. Because in physics, those of us who did physics, you do an experiment. And doing this experiment, the teacher tells you in the laboratory that for you to be able to answer these questions, all your senses must be alive. One, the smell. That if you have mixed some, if you have made some chemical mixes and you realize the smell, it could be an answer to some question. Observe mm. that you'll dis discover some answers by observation. Mm. The, 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 the sound, if there were some sound, the bubbles also could be part of answering. So the MPs, some of them, 
have come to Kampala for the first time. I hope you are aware that we have many MPs who are in Kampala for the first time. As parliamentarians? Yes, as parliamentarians. And okay. if Kampala is new to them, the best way you would explain Igulu to them is by taking, taking them. them there. So it was a good thing to take them there. Because when I was in Igulu, I said, the very question I asked, I said, do our MPs know what is here? Because they pass budgets here to go and put up serious infrastructure and investment there but they do not follow up to see whether the infrastructure put is serving the purpose for which it had been designed. So by them going there, I hope they have had an opportunity to visit these places. It will come to their senses that due diligence means that supervised from start to the end. You don't simply put up infrastructure and you say, in that last year's budget, we construct a logistics terminal, which is their idol. It's not okay. working. Mm. You must find a way of making it. I realized that if we follow properly what I saw, you can live in Gulu for a year without coming to Kampala, and you do business profitably, even more profitably, you come to Kampala. There is an airport that they are trying to put together. They needed to see all this. But my very good happiness lies in the fact that some of us warned about this long ago. Mm -hmm. I am a very strong proponent of federalism, where I believe that the best people to understand the problems of Acholi are the Acholis themselves. Now, if we had agreed to the idea of regional assemblies, where we agree that in a federal kind of arrangement, the regions look for solutions to their own problems. More like what's happening in Ghana and That uh, kind of Nigeria. thing. That's yeah. where we are going. Because I, I tell you, my mind changed when I visited Gulu. And I remember when I was winding up, I went and met, uh, uh, I met uh, the, 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 the presidential advisor on defense, General Salim Saleh, because he's permanent resident there mm. with a very beautiful home. And so I said, I have an opportunity to ask him questions. And he good enough, he agreed. And I asked him a lot of questions. I said, I see a lot of uncultivated land. Why are the Acholis not cultivating this land? A lot of it uncultivated. The man stays around here in a simple compound and is surrounded by a, many acres and acres of uncultivated land. And then he said, you know, it's what we are trying to work on under the Operation Wealth Creation. The problem is in the land system. Hmm. That you see that, and they told, he told me that you see that land there, uncultivated. You just go and put one hole like a book to be serious war, which means parliaments must help us unlock that kind the of potential. understanding. Okay, that <clears throat> the big farms I saw are for investors who have come from all over, but there is a lot of virgin, fertile, beautiful. Land and, and, you, and you think that two, three joy. days parliament will be there will be enough? If they are able to visit. Okay. You know, by observation, there are things that come to you. But the, the only mistake I had, and I want, I am yet to confirm. As you conclude, is that yes. The locals were not allowed to come to Kaunda grounds. If that was done, that was a mistake. They're supposed to come and also appreciate how parliament is conducted. Some of us are in journalism because of the things we observed while we are young. So if parliament goes there, there are many young people, those people who lost hope in the war areas, who need to see this and see that Uganda is finally back to life. They need to see these things, to see and observe for themselves, not just to be told. Okay. I have Thank no you. problem with the regional Thank sittings. You. Thank you, Simon. I'll definitely be coming back to you. Derek, um, the parliamentary sittings are here. No matter all the noise that came through, all the backlash, they did happen. Now, probably what we'll be doing at a later stage will be a post-mortem of were they effective or not. But currently, as is, is this the magic bullet to an all-encompassing legislative assembly? Uh, thank you, Mildred. Um, I listened to my seniors. Um, <clears throat> fortunately, I'm seated uh, with only seniors on this show, and I, 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 I smile from ear to ear. But when I listen to Angelo, um, I pick a thing or two, and then listen to, to my senior, Sir Simon Young Altaya. Um, until he said, he mentioned the magic name, uh, Geno Salim Salim. <laughs> That's a Could magic have, name for? Yes, for, 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 for Gulu, to be particular. Could I have ever known uh, 
what exactly it is that he was doing in, in, in Gulu. And, and I appreciate that. I was not doing Salim Saleh. <clears throat> no, no, you weren't. That's not what I was doing. No, no, you weren't. And I visited Salim Saleh at the Abs tail abs end of my visit. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But it only rings a bell to me that uh, I now do understand why. You have selectively uh, picked what's, what's information. Really, <laughs> what's with what the name? What is the here? My, mm -hmm. they, there is no innuendo. It's just an observation that this was a mission. He, had, he was on a mission, certainly, no. without, without no. doubt. It was my but private mission. He, he can explain himself. No, okay, from without, Simon's without mission mm. or without. no mission, let's go to from the other But and, he and, says and, and, that and, was a preamble to his and appreciation. I, and I feel... <laughs> of the city. I feel, I wish... And I went there for the past. I, I, I wish... The one he said, creation? What wealth has he created? For me, I that wish the question. that if my senior had been to Gulu with an independent mind, um, probably would be having You're a now very different kind of uh, You're now insinuating, but I will not there's go no, there. There is no insinuation. <clears throat> I have been on this panel with uh, people who, are, who live in Gulu, who were born in Gulu. Mm. I've been to Gulu quite uh, numerous times, uh, for journalism particularly. Mm. Um, and it, it gives you an, an, an opportunity to observe, but also to speak to as many uh, people as possible from different walks of life who live mm. there and, and face life from different angles. And when I listen to my, uh, my senior, um, Angelo, um, um, quoting the book of, uh, uh, the good judge Benjamin Odoki, it 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 ring. It makes me feel that I wish what is in this book is exactly what the MPs are doing in 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 Gulu. Mm. Um, I wish it were that. What are they doing vis-a-vis -vis what is in the book actually, which is the search for the national consensus? When you look and and observe and read and also uh, read all the literature around what the Odokis were doing across the country. It is, it is not even next to mediocrity that the MPs are doing um, uh, for three days, going to, to, to Gulu for three days and come out and just thump that we've taken parliament to the people of Uganda. I mean, there is a lot that can ever be fathomed in just three days, can ever be even just talked about in three days. Maybe it could be and, a start to and, an understanding. And, and, and one of, one of, the, one of the, uh, the, the, the words I pick from Angelo is symbolism. Symbolism is, but that posturing is not something that Uganda wants or needs right now. I feel Uganda needs real hands-on solutions to the problems of the people of Uganda from west, from east from north and wherever. I feel one of the conversations that has been in the public domain from the time they announced these regional meetings has always been um, the budget that yeah. is attached <coughs> to it. I think I feel that many parliamentary leaders need to listen to, or even government, need to listen to more than the, 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 the rub or rubbish it. Democracy is an expensive venture. It is, but then if you do not put opportunity and, and, um, and, uh, and uh, if you do not put priority first, then you miss the entire point. Because I feel Uganda is suffering right now. Uh, I saw the president, the president saying that intern doctors can fend for themselves for internship, a thing that we've not had in, this, in, in the history of this country. But if you feel and if, if <coughs> when you see that all this money is being spent, whatever is going to be spent in this region of sittings, and then, and, then, and then you look at the priorities of the needs of Uganda, you feel we have missed a lot in, in, in so saying. Simon puts it clearly that Gulu is actually very smart, very clean, very clean. Than, you, than Kampala. Gulu is a city you want to stay in. If one day even this government just changed that, let's change our capital to Gulu, everyone will, will be, anyone who would go to Gulu would be very, very fascinated with such an idea. But for me, I feel, one, parliament has acted impulsively. And it comes with the timing. Okay. <coughs> um, 
do you have enough time to observe what's happening in Gulu? Probably pre-plan, or are you just jumping onto this because two or three people sat in one boardroom and said, by the way, because of everything that parliament is going through, I think if we introduced uh, regional sittings, we might actually sway a few, a few brains or minds away Perhaps from the entire see. story that's happening in parliament. Okay. And it gives, because of that, because of that, it gives, because of that, it gives, it gives a very different picture. And, and many of us cannot help but wonder whether it's an image kind of uh, cleansing or really uh, people who have sat and feel concerned about the issues that are happening in, okay. Uga in Uganda. Okay. For me, the former is actually true. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Derek. I'll definitely be coming back to you. Simon seems to be disagreeing with a few um, of what you've said, but you're entitled to your own opinion. Uh, to Mr. Serunjoji, um, here it is. Whatever the case, it will be a post-mortem discussion. But what's your gut feeling about such parliamentary sittings, the good, the bad, the ugly about them? Thank you, Mildred. Especially thank you for uh, first letting me listen to all the gentlemen on the, chat, <laughs> <laughs> on the panel before, before I say something. Okay. First of all, I've been to Gulu. I think I first went to Gulu 15 years ago. I saw it when it was much worse than it is. Then I last went there maybe two years ago. So I have seen some transformation, <coughs> actually a lot of it. And that's a good thing. Uh, if Ugandans go to Gulu, if they go to Kasese, if they go to all the places in this country, uh, it's good we are with uh, uh, my friend Angel on the panel, and he's a member of the board of the Uganda, Uganda Investment, Investment Authority. <coughs> and I think one of the things they should be doing, they should be facilitated to do, is to show us around. If you have your money, and you are in Kampala, stuck here, instead of putting it in a show. Actually, um, to maybe Madeira, just you to... You can invest it here. Just to, to... I've paid attention to Uganda Investment Authority activities. They've even come up with... A, 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 they've written information about literally every region in the country, what businesses you can do there, how much money you can put it, and what you can actually be able to gain out of that. I understand that. that. I mm -hmm. understand that, but now written... They have hidden it from us because Angelo knows we cannot actually... They've not publicized most it of enough. Us, <laughs> most of us want to read it. They may know it uh, okay. and they have put it aside, yeah. but then <clears throat> Ugandans don't have it in their faces. They yeah. want to have Mildred, uh, I mean to be facilitated to be here with Mildred, to take people from NBS, mm. to Kasese, to actually show us, to Guru, to wherever, to Mbale, to Busia. To, so we know the opportunities. Yeah. There is another... Uh, important body, Uganda Tourism Board, uh, I think that's what it's called, and they should be able to make Ugandans interested, Ugandans like Simon, uh, so that you, are, you don't go to Gulu when you're 46 years old <laughs> and you have been around. Yeah. Uh, so that we need to know our country, the MPs, uh, when they get their money and they have holidays, they should be able to go to Kapchora and spend a week instead of thinking of going to London, Miami, Nairobi, or wherever. I mean, encouraging domestic tourism so that Ugandans can know Uganda well. We know that we have a lot more than we actually think we have. And uh, so we, we don't look inwards most of the time. So if you think of what UIA can do and what Ugandan Tourism Board can do, most of what Sir Simon is worried about wouldn't even exist. Mm. Members of parliament shouldn't be taken to parliament to have a sitting so that they can see what is happening or not happening in Gulu or Tumbarara or wherever. Or, because uh, I was following a conversation on, uh, uh, in a close WhatsApp group and people were, were saying, but now parliament is not coming to our town. Why aren't they coming to Jinja? Why aren't they coming to this place? And everyone wants it. So it's a scramble yeah. for so attention. So if you say, we want to take parliament to the people, you bring it to Butambala. Uh, put a tent in my village uh, playground, and we see parliament legislate. Because the thing is then, uh, it loses meaning. You cannot take parliament 
to the people because the, we, we have a dedicated parliamentary building uh, at Parliament Avenue where we know that's where Parliament sits. But, but we also know that Parliament, any other place can be declared Parliament by declaration of the Speaker. If that's why you've seen the them speaker sit can at Kololo or Serena. And say this and this and but, but again, I mean, you put into consideration other very serious issues and I'll get to that. So what, what, how I want to see Parliament in my village is what the people do in Parliament. Those distinguished members of Parliament have to do things that are felt in my village. And then that is the, the best way to take parliament to the people. Then people will feel that parliament is relevant. Parliament is important when we see that our member of parliament has gone to parliament, said this and whatever, and then he can come to our village and translate that you see, the things that you see happening here have actually been discussed and decided on in parliament. Mm. I think that is, that's the best way you take parliament to the people. Okay. You don't say that you are going to go uh, moving. You use the, a very good word, nomadism. <laughs> because, uh, I, I mean, now the parliamentary building has been expanded. Uh, we have uh, a, a new parking lot. Now we have another place where they are renting. I don't know how many other spaces. And then you say, we now have to spend so much money for in transport allowances, in uh, out of station allowances, in everything. So these people go to Guru. The people in Guru, I think there are some businesses that actually are feeling good now. Okay. That they have hosted people and whatever. But then we are living in a time where we are talking about hostility. We should be talking about it. And we are talking about using the little money we have to do those things that affect Ugandans most that can actually cause uh, change or relief in some sectors. In, uh, so uh, I don't know the people who make decisions for parliament, if they think about it and say, now this is the best time for us to throw some billions around and Ugandans see it, and uh, it is not a problem. We can go here, we can go there, and whatever. The budget will be 20 billion or whatever. I don't know the exact figure. I don't have, but you know, uh, I think it's a bit insensitive. Okay. All right. I, we will be wrapping up this conversation, especially with the notion that many did bring out that, um, you know, Parliament needs to understand and pay a little bit more attention to the regional issues than it is when they're in Kampala, where there is issues of national importance from wherever, and sometimes some could get lost in the, in the discussion there. But let's do that when we do return from this break. Okay, uh, welcome back from the short commercial break. Thank you so much for keeping it to NBS Television. This is the Media Roundtable where we get to have journalists and their perspective making sense of the stories that have made headlines during this week. And as we went into a break, our conversation uh, focused on the regional parliamentary sittings that started this week in um, Gulu, particularly in the northern part. Now, as we went out, like I clearly said, the biggest conversation was that with these regional sittings, you get now to focus all the energies of parliament, all the attention onto the matters that affect that particular region that need to be paid attention to, as opposed to when they're in Kampala, when everyone says everything and sometimes you have no specific focus. Angelo, do you think that is a pointer uh, to pay attention to? Because all the issues that were raised, I think when we go back and flip through the Hansard, the pages of the Hansard, you will definitely find the same kind of issues having been raised on the floor of parliament. Is it any different that now we're just giving them an opportunity to flourish as a single subject? No, the symbolism has its place. Uh, the sense, um, to quote uh, Odoki here, uh, it is such for a national consensus. Because on a daily, sometimes, um, you feel the country is more divided than united these days. Um, you know, especially in the digital world, uh, if you just listen to what people are saying to each other, uh, how they're describing, you know, their challenges, there's a lot of anger, you know. And what politicians do, and if they are good, they do well, uh, is bring people together, sometimes around an idea, sometimes around an occasion, sometimes around a symbol. Mm. So to that extent, you know, 
like I said, more consultation is better than less. Um, so we'll, it remains to be seen whether the country will feel united uh, with these regional parliamentary sittings or whether it signals, especially ahead of the next election, uh, that things are normal. Uh, the big elephant in the, the elephant in the room, I think, for Uganda, and even much more important for investors, is what we call uh, political certainty. Mm? Mm. If you look at this year alone, about four or five uh, publications uh, projecting uh, what's going to happen in Uganda for investors, they, yeah, the one thing that stands out is political uncertainty. What's mm. going to happen in two years? Mm? So some of what this parliament is doing, and I, I think you can credit this parliamentary sitting for, is investing our political enterprise with some sense of normalcy, okay? Even if it's symbolic, that the parliament of Uganda is in various regions, um, and the people have had a chance to see how it's working, the parliamentary democracy is healthy and alive, mm -hmm. and that regardless of what happens, if there is a transition or not, uh, at least there's an institution you can count on. Mm. So they're, they're the, so it, it, serves, it, it serves that purpose. But to what my colleagues have said about whether it's efficient and whether it gets, as uh, Derek was uh, referring to, whether it gets to the heart of the issues, I think that remains to be seen. So I'm, I'm a child of the digital society, okay? Um, so I was looking for, in these sittings, hmm. some aspect of... Um, uh, the use of digital tools. I mm? totally agree with <clears> you. Yeah. <clears throat> to, to try and get in As covers. many people. Yeah. Mm. Because, it, you know, the north where I come from is a very dynamic place. You know, we have, like in the districts of Madi, where I am from, the refugee population is twice the, like, that of the local population. Mm. Mm. Phones are everywhere. In fact, most Ugandans are on, are on TikTok. <clears throat> Young, young, young people in the towns, okay? Um, there are deep-seated and underlying currents in those districts, which when you're there, people will talk, talk to you about, okay? Uh, why are, are most of our customers Sudanese? Mm? Mm. What is our relationship with that? Mm? Uh, why is it that when we want to do big things, the money comes from elsewhere? Why is there no money in the hands of locals, hmm? that is current. So like, I feel that these digital tools would have, been, would have served not just um, the, the parliamentarians, uh, but the rest of the country in such a way that there's an exposition of the life, the feelings, and the challenges mm. of that part of, uh, that part of the world. Okay. I'm actually happy that he, he traveled there in person. Northern Uganda is beautiful. At this time of the year, it is green. Yes. True. It's a wonderful Very place green. to see. Beautiful, okay? yes. It's a wonderful place to see at this time. Mm. But without digital tools, what you saw on your, on your screens was it's, it's just red the chairs, yeah. you know, <laughs> some, some yeah. Yeah. with a microphone, and that's all we saw, mm. you know. All right, all right. And, and that's where I want to pick it from to get to Sir, uh, Mr. Serenjaji. Look at it in the angle of, okay, yes, it's, it's a good feeling, it's a good idea to say, this time we want to pay attention to only what's happening in the northern Uganda. Then we will come to the other regions. But is it being used as well? How better could those specific concerns of different regions or cities be brought to the fore for national attention? Oh, that's a tough question. Mm. Uh, how... Because that's one, of the, one, that's one of the icebreakers we were giving. Oh, no, you know when we're in Parliament, uh, one from Bunyoro says issues of national importance, another from Teso, another from... And you know it all gets mixed up. We don't give it attention. This time, we're coming to you. We pay attention to your issues, and we address them. Uh, I did follow the entire discussion when uh, uh, Parliament sat in Gulu. But what I saw... Uh, the thing that has been trending these days is that one opposition MP has been granted leave to introduce uh, 
Administration of Parliament yes, amendments. Motion, yeah. yeah. An amendment so that, the lead, so that the lead of the opposition is elected by opposition MPs. Yes. Uh, that could just be a coincidence. It could be a reaction because uh, the leader of the opposition uh, and uh, a certain group of opposition MPs said, we don't go. We have decided not to go. So uh, they might have decided then to use the sittings in a guru now to As react to that uh, and say, okay then, if you will not do uh, what they speak of parliament and maybe the other people who lead the parla uh, parliament decide, we shall punish you. Now we shall uh, sit here and say we have granted him leave now to introduce a bill that may amend this. And so I don't know how that then uh, helps us focus on what is there. If the real reason they went to Guru was to pay attention to those things, the Speaker of Parliament could have been deliberate in saying, okay, those Kampala issues, the politics and whatever, that one we can shelve for now. What we shall have on the other paper will be stuff that affects this region. If they have been raising issues of uh, matters of national importance, if there is something to do with our power, if there is something to do with um, uh, what Sir Simon saw as redundant land, whatever, if there are issues about Gulu and the North, mm. uh, this region that we needed to discuss, that is what I could have, uh, I would have wanted to see come through. But then what happened is what would usually happen at Parliament Avenue. And so I think then that, that premise collapses. Okay. It is not so much about uh, us now getting an opportunity to focus on that region. Then you're asking how best uh, could the issues from the regions come uh, to the fore? There are discussions about how best we can do that. I think someone on this panel was earlier referring to, maybe in the break, during the break, referring to if we had, let's say, regional parliaments under a federal system of governance, and people would be discussing those things uh, and say this is this and whatever. Then there used to be a time when uh, I followed very keenly issues coming from different regions. The actually parliamentary group was very strong. The caucus. They, yeah, used, there used to be a time when Buganda caucus was very strong. And they say, OK, now we are going to pay attention to the issues affecting us. I don't know. Mm. We, you could have different caucuses from different places articulating those issues. But you see, the center of the politics is Kampala, and it is parliament. Those issues can actually come through. The media, uh, where we have worked for so many years, will always help now to expound on them. This issue has come through. We can discuss it. Then the politicians can distill it and say, now we, 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 we are, this is policy. We are adopting this. We are doing this as a reaction to this or that. So I don't think there is a dearth of uh, avenues mm. through which we can have conversations about what's happening in Uganda. Okay. The uh, only serious problem is, do we actually, the current system, are we invested enough into in, uh, making sure that those are the issues that should come to the that fore? That should come through. OK, thank you very much. Derek, to you. Um, like I said, the preamble for the speaker was, this is a people's parliament and we want to take it to the people. How best then do we get to have the parliamentarians, I mean the people feel the parliamentarians, because this is representative democracy anyway, <clears throat> but still, not every person can be able to probably come to parliament and be able to view the proceedings. Um, there used to be a journalist. Or neither do they have a TV, if we display it on TV, that they will be able to watch in some areas, they don't. There used to be a journalist um, who used to do a people's parliament kind of uh, across Uganda and they would move from region to region. Uh, mm. he's now, she's now a member of parliament and, and, and former minister. Um, and, and, and when you observed, actually there is lots of things that came out of that people's parliament uh, that um, 
the Honorable Minister or the Honorable MP used to do. And who are the people who are involved in this kind of debate? He used to have local, deep local leaders. You mm. have uh, LC3s, you have uh, town clerks, you have um, district local leaders, and, 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 and they would even come to a representation of the village, the village um, chairmen, chairpersons and staff. And they will bring real issues, for instance, if it were nodding syndrome in, 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 in northern or if it was the, 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 gold, uh, the gold mining issues in my, my district in Busia, or if it were the land or mudslides in, 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 in Bududa and Bulambuli and all that, they would really come out um, very articulately and, and with vivid examples, vivid uh, stories from victims and stuff like that. And in the sense, <clears throat> the resolutions of such issues and, and, and the solutions would amicably be brought to a fore and people would come up with different suggestions. And one would actually look at that as one of the best benchmarks if our parliament really intended to have issues discussed. That mm. not only are you having the MPs from Kampala going to sit in Gulu to discuss things of Kampala in Gulu. And we've seen it. Uh, we saw We've seen many, many, I mean, like through the three days uh, I was following and, and, and many uh, were coming up with um, matters of national importance. Mm. And <laughs> probably this was the time, the best time for when you're going for regional uh, sittings, you would have changed that to matters of regional importance. Because if it keeps to uh, matters of national importance, then it doesn't then like... But, but, but still, a regional matter could... Uh, Pew out <clears throat> to the entire um, country, so it still remains an issue of national importance Which because cannot... the money that will be taken there is paid by you, me, and everyone else across the country. Which it still remains. I saw I saw many of these being shot down, and for me that's my problem. Those that were being raised. Yes, mm. I saw many of them being shot down, and those can be done in Kampala. Who said they can't be done in Kampala? Who said? The, the speaker cannot just say, today, let's focus on the issues of, of Gulu. Let's focus on the issues of West Nile, for instance, where he comes from, and there's a big problem of electricity and stuff uh, joining the, the national grid. They were connected the other day, though. For me, I feel, again, we are posturing. Okay. Ribbon cutting like... Uh... Ribbon cutting like Angelo put it yeah. quite clearly. These things can be done and summarized and even dealt with if we are intentional on, on solving those matters from Kampala here. If we carried it to, to those regions, then for me, let's have the vivid stories of people. Let's have uh, peoples from villages who are coming to tell vivid stories about nodding syndrome. Okay. For us to appreciate exactly what's happening. But if you're going to take it to the regions and again have the same ministers uh, seated in, 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 in that parliamentary, um, in the parliamentary sitting and speaking things out of sheer ignorance without any touch on the stories, without any kind of in-depth research, I feel we still are missing the point. And who is going to suffer? It's the people. The people well, of the Uganda, I, because, because it's their money that has been taken. What I pick from you is the intentionality that if we are going to deal with issues, it's not about taking the parliament to the no, region. It doesn't happen. It's about being intentional to actually yes. address those. Mm. Uh, looking at some of the um, comments coming through, Imam Kasozi says, um, Parliament is behaving like true Africans touch, feel, and then believe. <laughs> Listening to the praises that were heaped on the president by largely the MPs from the north does tell it all. If it needs all MPs to go and see what goes on in the regions, what then is the role of individual members of parliament? Why don't MPs properly document the issues? And as uh, Angelo said, has said, use the digital technology to help us, uh, to help the parliament, uh, us and the parliament get to understand. And finally, government has several representatives in these areas. What is their role? What about specific ministers that are tagged to those specific regions? Uh, Simon, this is why I get to bring your perspective in. Still on, they're the same issues that we've had. Does it make it different when we take the parliament to the region? And unfortunately, 
I think the problem is that we are speaking English and we tend to think about these issues like we are Englishmen. Yeah. Uh, there are things that Ugandans need to get out of their mind. One of them is telling ourselves lies. I don't know why this country has adopted a culture of believing that it's better to lie and, and, and not be re real and just point a picture. The president of Uganda has state lodges in different places. Mr. Museven has over the years been holding regional kind of meetings with the leaders. He goes to Virginia and says he's going to stay there for three years, for three days, sorry, and calls upon all leaders in that region to speak what the problems could be. And he's been carrying ministers. He says, aha, uh -huh, they are saying this, aha, uh -huh, they are saying that. I don't really find nothing wrong with members of parliament going to, to observe some of the things. I have run campaigns twice in Busoga. And when you go to Busoga and witness the kind of poverty levels in the extreme villages where you give somebody 1,000 and they have to kneel down and thank you and call over all blessings upon you, mm. you'd realize the pain that happens in some of these villages. I don't know why the seniors are forgetting the type of members of parliament we have today. That also speaks we, to the type of people who elect them. It, it, yes. It, 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 it takes me to, we have a parliament where some MPs cannot express properly what they would have loved to express from their areas. This is not a parliament of readers. And I think on this I'll quote the late Jacob Olanya. This is not a parliament that you say there is a policy document, go read through, come and critique. We are talking about a parliament that Mr. Museven called for. Bring those who even sleep for as long as they can wake up and vote on an issue <laughs> and support us. These people can only understand by seeing, by touching, by feeling. Even when you send them to go and do benchmarking, which has taken a lot of our money in every budget, to go and do the benchmarking, they come back and you see things remain the same way. You and I have traveled. Every time you travel to a new country, and you observe what's happening there, you're like, do our people keep coming to this country learn a thing or two? Therefore, you know, there are many ways of, of skinning a rat. If these people have refused to listen when you come and talk to them in Kampala, better we take them to Soga and they observe and see what is happening there. Okay. What am I expecting? That at the end of the regional seatings, will sit together in Kampala mm. and aggregate through the issues and say, what are those common issues that cut across? Because I will start with that. The, I know there is an issue that was spoken in Gulu, that will be raised in Masaka, that will be raised in Fort Potro, that will be raised in Busoga. We now say, ah, this becomes our top national priority. The fact that it has come out prominent in all regions. Because one thing I liked, and, and I want Derek to, 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 to listen to this, because it was word that some people were put down with regional issues. Dr. Mona, as State Minister for Northern Uganda, presented a list of 36 issues, 36 challenges in, northern, in the Northern region. And if you look through them, they are actually valid for those of us who have visited the place. Now, I am waiting for another 36 issues that will be raised in Masaka, another 20 raised in Kasese, another 20 raised in Jinja. And then when we come back, we say, okay, what are those that are cross-cutting? And what are those that are specific to, to these regions? I love one of the reasons why I'm so much for Gulu is that I observed we can deal with the congestion and the troubles in Kampala by making other areas look like Kampala or even better. Mm. It is not something you can achieve in a week, but over time you can observe. The stupid thing that I, I, I must say here, away from Angel's ears, because I wanted to challenge Angela to tell us, you have money in the investment authority. Do they? How much of it are you spending on selling Uganda to Ugandans? Quite a lot. What's the budget you have? Not much this time. For, 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 for investments in Gulu, in Acholi. <clears throat> 
what what is you are doing in actually i will give you 30 yeah. seconds for usurping my powers and ask um angelo to actually respond to the questions you asked because they are very important before we take a break yes we don't have enough money to spend i think um if you read the budget allocations uh, uae's budget is basically for wages this time but we do a lot of um, budget neutral outreaches and inward missions are... That defense I will not accept. Yeah. Why? No, no, I will not accept. But you you are supposed you. to have money from the budget for that party. Now, that's it where, is not that's there. Not there. It is not the there. That's what he's saying. Am I, am I the and then when you say, if the money, Then the money is not there. We stop yeah. it at that. When you say we have okay. budget in new to activities, you're trying you to say, hide it. No, you no. don't have money. Listen, not, Why? Every, not everything that we do requires money. Okay? Not everything we do requires money. Mm. Now, in the case of Northern Uganda, which is one of our most thriving uh, uh, places, we have district investment committees, that's a fact, okay? We are in touch with district business coalitions. <coughs> now that you spend some time in, uh, in Gulu and Nira, you actually spend some more time in Nira, you find that farmer organizations that are linked to the way financing is done in Uganda, particularly through state financing, mm -hmm. UDB and others, are well coordinated. And that's why you see that revival the, there. The so UAA is a catalyst in that process. I could put you through the paces okay. no, to like show how, how it's done. But as, as, yeah. for, as for what he was suggesting... I actually observed your, efforts by some people to make northern Uganda a milk-producing area. I there, there are many things. By the way, your, your, your history is kind of... Um, we will take time to educate we will. at we some will point. Have that we need okay. to be taking a very but, short but break, you but to, you responded. You need to know, and yeah. most of you need to know, yeah. that actually district administrations uh, was self-funded in the 1960s. It was a ranching country. That was, yeah, a, sure. that was a cattle economy. Mm, mm. Okay? Yeah. People don't know that. Yeah, sure, it yeah. was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway. surprising as it is, but I've definitely mm. had uh, so to it's read going a back bit in of history. that text. It's not like you're, you're and anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have to be breaking up this conversation. And when we do return in the last few minutes, we'll have an idea, discussion about this FDC conversation. Dissolve, do not dissolve, possible, not possible now, another new political party. <laughs> well, we'll be back. Like I said, Simon, I am uh, the moderator. Let's take a break and get back. <laughs> Okay, very good morning to you and thank you so much for keeping it NBS Television. It's the Morning Breeze Media Roundtable and we get to close this off in this particular session as we switch a little bit from the regional parliamentary sittings on to the unending wars in the Forum for Democratic Change, the Blue Party. Um, after some consultations with um, the Katonga faction after they had broken away for a bit uh, with the Najana Nkumbi faction, they decided the only solution would be in dissolution of the Forum for Democratic Change and they also this week uh, tendered in their intention to register a new political uh, party, PFF. And um, I want to start with you, Sir Simon Muyanga, because this is your former home. I don't know whether you still have a bit of roots there or entirely not. You have decided to leave. But what does this mean for an opposition political party as FDC, that it's now a call for dissolution, which the Nigerian Nankumbi faction is totally rattled with as a new home is created for those who believe they were stifled, their voices were stifled in the other party. Has um, Mujisha Monto been exonerated with what he talked about earlier before he left to form Alliance for National Transformation? First, uh, I want to say to the one you started with that uh, I joined the Democratic Party because my father was a member of DP. Mm -hmm. So it was not by my decision, it was okay. by other coercion. FDC is the only political party that you joined. That I with. joined with my heart for my time, with my own understanding, passion, and love after listening to Dr. VCJ. So, you cannot talk about my political life and you have no FDC in there. Mm. Neither can FDC tell their story without me. I oh, am really? part and yes, because I have stood for elections twice on their ticket. Oh, yes. They have spent on me so that you cannot have their story told without me. Nevertheless, 
I have reduced my attachment with the party in terms of active politicking. First, because I realized long ago that there were challenges there. And second, because I got an opportunity to know what happens in the night when many people are sleeping. In fact, I can tell people on this platform that I've realized just recently that this country works at night, not during day when everybody thinks they are do doing. The, the real boys that control this country work at night, and a lot flies at night. I mean, it's people walking during day. They are smarter than they were at night. They are. <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> I have started working because how would I observe the night? So yeah, it's only a night. That's why I say that, that I have learned that working at night with them, I realize that they do a lot of work at, at, at night. Back to what you want us to talk about. First of all, to me, it is unfortunate that I feel the pain that we are destroying an institution that has taken our time and energies over the last 20 years. The split that the media has promoted, you and your friends. No, it is existent. We have uh, not promoted any other. It's the same thing that happened with uh, General Mutu. He left and things continued it is, moving. It exists, but yeah. I said you have promoted. I don't say you have created. News, news, news. You have, you have promoted. The news, media news, has actually news. promoted this split. <laughs> so much is an unfortunate one okay this place especially I, I said last week you cannot lose critical brains like the areas goes the vestiges the same young unders from your political formation and you simply say no we don't care mm, mm, mm. neither can the katonga group lose the brains and mobilization tactics of Patrick O'Boy, of Nandala Mafavi, the historical, the institutional memory of Jack <coughs> Sabiti and the Trelebu Kabamwendas, and you simply say, no, no, we don't care. If they go, they go. That's unfortunate. Imagine having these two together. So the split is unfortunate, but the desire to form another political party is civil. If you can't work with them, Move take out. your way. If you think they're doing it wrong, go do it right. And we'll want to see. The only pain is uh, some people are talking about the time. You know, Dr. Vesje has taken 20 years building this. Now he goes to start afresh. The new one is not Vesje. Vesje's time in building two political institutions, the NRM as a young man, and then the FDC, in his late age, is enough. You think he's totally out of this, other one? Yes, he's totally out of this in this understanding, and I want you to, to, to listen to it. He has successfully imparted his ideals in a different group of people. He can rest. Okay. If the people he has been working with, including me, cannot advance what he has been teaching over the years, then he has successfully failed to do anything, we'll label him as having failed. Mm. But if he has taught us well to love this country, to be consistent, <coughs> to be resilient, he has, he's, he's the one who opened us to understanding some state schemes that we never knew, he has done his job. Let the young people, the Semujung and us, the Yasu Kwagos and the others, take on from there. What Westji has done is to say that a struggle does not lie on individual. I, I think there's a story I need to tell people. When I told Dr. Bess, when I went to tell Dr. Bess that I was tired of promoting FDC, and I told him I want to take, I want to go away. This is what he told me. He said, I am very much aware that in this struggle, some people will vie Follow. Mm. I am very much aware that others will get tired, others will abandon, others will retreat. If you are one of those who have retreated, or left, I respect because I went to him and we agreed. We talked. We had some very good cup of coffee over it, and we talked about so many things, telling him why I thought this thing was for okay. okay. And unfortunately, that day he did not believe what I'm t he is seeing now because I told him this before he came out with what the split, and I said, "Me, I don't see things working out." 
He said, no, you know, you know, you know, let's keep together, you see. <laughs> Today he's not in Najana Nkombi. <laughs> so I appreciate that the step they have taken to create another political party is better. They decide that it's not that you want power in 2026. Changing, building democracy and making, changing a country is not one week, two weeks, two years or so. It could take 50 years. The issue is that you have started moving on that journey. So I appreciate both institutions. Let Najana Nkumbi, that feels that these were bad people, work without them and we see what they can offer. Mm. 26 will be a benchmark to see how progressive they have worked without the malls now. That's why I was quarreling with Amri at calling these people malls. Yet it is the same thing that he, he wrote on. Let the Katonga group also organize itself and we see what they can do better than where they are coming from. And whether it takes 10 years, they may not take power in 2026, but they have started on the journey. Okay. The only problem I find in both political formations is that they have not understood the enemy they claim to be fighting. Thank you. Nobody has understood this enemy called the OLM7. Thank you very much. Areas, and, and I will pick up from what Simon actually ended with, is it, because looking at the formation of political parties, in essence, political parties should be formed on ideology. Many of the political parties that we've had, many at times are formed because people have failed to, de uh, to agree, Splits. because of issue, uh, egos coming through. Is this something that should have actually been done, or FDC as an um, opposition political party to ride on should have actually, they should have swallowed their egos to, you know, agree to disagree and disagree to agree? Uh, thank you, Mildred. Um, FDC, as a journalist, actually uh, a political journalist, I was born in FDC. Okay. <laughs> I was there when it was formed. I saw everything and I have followed that party until today. Mm. Uh, many of the things, one of the things that I understood, just trying to see, to follow what was going on, uh, is that 2003, 4, 5, going on to the 2006 election, what was happening, well, because people were, most of the people who had been working with Genome 70, had been uh, with him in the bush, in the government, were disappointed that he wanted to continue uh, ruling the country. And they thought, I think also spurred on by what had happened uh, in Kenya, when Raila Odinga rose to power, 2001, I think, 2002, they thought it would happen in Uganda. So many of the people who left government to join FDC, to help in the formation of the FDC, thought what they would do would just be to move out of NRM, come into what uh, then was... Uh, reform agenda? Even before reform agenda mm. came, Therefore, there was something uh, basically I was talking about reform now in that campaign. Mm. They thought they would just come to Genome 7 and take power. Most of them were not uh, with first thought now. Having talked to them over a long time and seen what they did, they were not prepared for what would happen. That it would take very long for them to fight Genome 7 and maybe they would fail. So most of them uh, when they realized that was not going to happen, they actually, they left the fight. <coughs> then it seems to me, Dr. Bess, they had planned this for a very long time. Hmm? And uh, <coughs> he knew maybe if this happens and uh, we defeat him seven, good. If we have to fight for a long time, uh, I, I am prepared for that. The others, very many people, you cannot talk of individuals, but you would see many of them would run out of means. They are not used to staying out of government. Uh, you don't know how to exist without uh, getting the packs from here. They have uh, given you out of parliament. You don't get a salary. So the FDC became very weak, even by the time it was formed. And when the 2006 election was lost, it was uh, almost the time when you would see that the FDC would break. I'm only saying that uh, with uh, now hindsight, mm. having seen all these things happen. So now we are talking about 
what is happening today where there is a split, this split, and it has been happening for a very long time. Uh, talking to Dr. Besige, Simon has been referring to that. Every time uh, somebody he had been working with in FDC left and maybe said, I'm going back to government, and he would say, I thank them very much for the time they have committed. I know this is very hard. And whatever. While the other people would go very hard against those people, he'd uh, sympathize with them and say, okay, this person has given us their time. And because he understood their personal circumstances. And Genome 7 has done that very well. He knows when to attack people when they are most vulnerable. Uh, it seems he gets intelligence and he knows this one doesn't have this or that or the other. So he will come and provide. And this person will say, why, why am I dying? To, to the control, we won't even it get is the vulnerable who keep going to him. Uh, yeah, now some people think he fishes them, but the, what, from my own observations, it's the vulnerable who yeah. keep targeting From him. your own observation, yes. not experience. Uh, that no. is, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> one brings the other. One brings the other. One brings the other, and it is very interesting. Yes. Yeah. So those admissions, I think, need to come out. Yes, sir. And we say uh, how Genome 7 now decided to use uh, sweeteners, even sometimes more than uh, actually force, to get to destroy these Soft parties. Power. So the sweeteners. infiltration <laughs> that happened was apparent for very many years. Okay. And this thing now, we knew it was just a shell. So, so it was just when uh, kept, waiting to happen. When people kept saying this one is a mole, the other one is a mole, whatever. So the FDC, the 20 years that they have been there as the central focus uh, for Genome 7 to destroy has been so long. And there was no way they were going to survive it. I think forming a new party may be a good thing because you know, okay, now that may last if he stays for another 10 years, we can stay here and uh, uh, kind of uh, defend ourselves against that okay. uh, infiltration. That is inevitable. That is going to come. And so that is uh, the real issue. And, okay. uh, what is happening now, it is up to, I think it is down to how Dr. Vesje handled it. He could have decided to say, uh, we are not going to come out in the open with these people because the guys in Ajanankum needed to, face, to save face. Uh, they have taken the money because I think that money they are talking about that they took towards the last election, they see there's a new kid on the block, uh, Chagulani, who has a lot of uh, influence, people are following him. So they are scared. The guys in Ajanankum, we are not going to be the leaders of the opposition in the coming parliament, there is a new thing or whatever. Uh, so if M7 is knocking, it is easier for them to do a deal. Or if they, say, they just go. You bring something, or, you bring or, something Or like now. Simon said, they go even before they he go knocks. Until we mm. can help you sort out the Shagulani question. Uh -huh. It is these people who you, keep going. I don't know. OK, uh, but thank you. Thank you, Arias. You have his experience, and that is very good. So from <laughs> what you're saying, <laughs> it was actually a broken <laughs> glass from the beginning. <laughs> the crack only grew bigger. <laughs> what I think is. Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and to you, uh, Derek, here it is. Is it another, um, you know, master stroke that the Katonga faction has decided to pull <coughs> or it's draining more and more the energy of the once vibrant opposition political party now that they're calling for a dissolution? Um, you see, democracy is something that's very hard to understand. If you sit and read the real innuendos and the undertones of what it means to be a democratic state, you will actually get surprised. If I put uh, on the balance or on, on, on a weighing scale between Uganda and, for instance, South Africa, which one would you easily say is more democratic than the other? Certainly South Africa mm. or Kenya or the US. Uh, but you go there, and you find that South Africa has over 1,700 polit registered political parties. Hmm. Um, the US has over 50. I think there are 53. Kenya here has over 90. And you got, you know? <laughs> hmm. and, and, and those countries are actually more democratic than Uganda. 
And for us here, we are saying <coughs> the creation of more political parties is actually killing democracy. No. No. The creation of political parties and divisions in political parties is but just part of democracy. Mm. I mean, <coughs> democracy thrives on, on, on pools and, 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 and disagreements and, and, and agreements. You disagree to agree in most cases. And democracy, like we've all seen, is a game of numbers, game of influence. And every time you wake up, you have to make sure that you have influenced as many people as possible. And someone is going to disagree with you, and they are going to go and make another political formation. So for me, I think there are, there are people who are in politics that need to understand democracy a little bit deeper. And one would not actually be running for the dissolution of FDC. Mm. FDC can coexist with any and every party. Even when PFF comes, there is certainly going to be disagreements, even from the word go. And me, I have been to Katonga. Uh, I think two weeks ago I was talking to uh, Dr. Kiza Besige in an interview. And we talked about quite many things, uh, some of which are going to come out in, 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 in an interview that will be so publishing. But even from the onset of PFF, you there, see is, there, disagreements there is already still. disagreement. Okay. There's already disagreements. Uh, first on how uh, a few things are being organized, how, how, um, how to, to move, how to transition from the, from the blue of Najanan Kumbi to the blue now of which has been suggested, white and blue and things like that. And, and such, is, such is politics, such is democracy. So looking at the bigger picture of, of, of our country having chosen democracy unless we want to become a monarch, if we have chosen that path, then we need we to live by it, and, and we sh shall expect this. It's going to happen every other day. Disagreeing to agree is part of the game of politics, part of the game of democracy. And for me, I feel happy because as a baby country in terms of democracy, we are growing and we are making these strides. We've seen what uh, South Africa, for instance, went through to, to gain the kind of democracy that they celebrate today. It was not just a walk in a park, and, and, and we can also look at look at the U.S. We can look at um, we can look at Kenya. Still, they have not had um, uh, uh, they have not had a bed of roses in their walk okay. uh, to democracy to the mm. democracy that probably we might actually be looking at. So we need to just brace ourselves as people who are occupying this uh, political space for many of such. But then how do you move forward? Because at the end of the day, uh, the end justifies the means. Okay. That after all the squabbles and fights and stuff, at the end of the day, there has to be an agreement uh, arrived at. I do not blame Dr. Kiza Besige for whatever he's being blamed. He's just also part of the political uh, question. I, do, I would not blame, for instance, Dr. Um, Amriat or, or, or Muntu or the squabbles that are within uh, Noop and, 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 and Impuga. I would not even blame the squabbles that are within NRM. I would not blame the squabbles that are it's in It's just DP. part of the it's democracy. It's part of the democracy and it's going to be here. It's going to live with us for as long as we choose democracy. We okay. have to expect all the fruits that it comes with. All right, thank you very much. And just to wrap up the conversation, Angela, what do you make of this? Because I know through your journalistic, uh, your journalism time, the more active years, you covered a lot about our political, uh, you know, happenings. What does this tell? generation that's old enough to remember most of them are in their 40s and 50s. Uh, but basically was trying to leave Uganda via Katonga, I think. And uh, the military picked him up and we did, we used to break new stories. So I was in the studio, went on air, got him on the phone, and he's quarreling with soldiers. Hmm? And the phone, you know, that's how we were transmitting it. It was live, hmm? until it was grabbed away. I think they took his phones first, but the 
person next to him, I think, was Betty Kamen at the time. And she's the one who connected her. Another time I came early in the morning, because uh, I was a producer for a morning show, I get a call, I think, from Anne in the show. I don't know where she is in the morning. And uh, says, oh, something's happening at the airport. Turned out to be Dr. Besige is again kicking military officers as well as trying to, <laughs> to prevent him from boarding a flight. Mm -hmm. And we also went uh, live on air. So my, I have seen his struggle. Uh, we set up after he went into exile. And I think I was one of the three people who had seen us last time uh, for him to be able to speak to Ugandans. And the answer, the, the, the best of you, the other person he used to text us a number then go from one South African town to another, and you get another contact there for us to make the, the call. Mm -hmm. so, but reflecting upon all of these struggles, you know, because I didn't, I didn't vote for the return of, return of parties, Mildred. Reflecting on all of this, the one conversation I had with Dr. Besige that sits with me happened in, uh, uh, at Oxford. I met him there, and we were talking about transitions. And I told him my feeling is that traditional political parties we have today, given the real state of, of affairs in Uganda, it may not be relevant the point at which change actually happens. So tomorrow, if you wake up hmm, and suddenly there is no seven who has been the focal point of these efforts, okay, which forces will fill that vacuum which has been poorly constructed by these opposition political parties and their, and their NRM people. Okay. I think, Mildred, we shall be in for a real, real, real surprise. Uh, and I told Dr. Bessige that your time and that of your generation has gone because even I, you know, with all this experience I have, I cannot tell you which forces will replace your generation. And I'm, I'm prepared, I'm bracing myself every day that when that time comes, it will be revealed the people he says are at night. <laughs> <laughs> the ones who are working at night. The ones who are working yes. at night will reveal themselves. Okay. And I think you, you'll have very new formations. Um, my, my only hope is that freedom, which has been our experience for the last 25 years and mm. is relative, is sustained. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's brace ourselves, like many of the um, you know, uh, panelists have said, it's time mm. for bracing ourselves for anything it's that will come. Mm. That is the part. The, uh, the media's role in this whole thing. <laughs> you already <laughs> said so we're the ones who are promoting also. it. Mm. You said we are promoting it, it is a democracy, and we will keep covering the stories, yes. because those who are working at night and those who are working during day, they all need, have something to yes. offer, and they need <laughs> the coverage. But well, that's all the time we have time for, and uh, we'll be giving more and more detail to these conversations. To you, mm. Mr. Elias uh, Serenjoji, thank you so much thank for you. sparing time to be with us. Sir Simon Muyangaltaya, welcome back from Gulu, 46 years of your life, and you mm. just visited, yeah. but still, better late than never. Angelo Izama, Come thank you so end. much. Uh, Angelo mm. asked that you should go and visit Lira, more. particularly. Lira for, uh, no, Lira, Lira, nice Lira for the industry hub. Moyo is a undiscovered. It's really, really big. Yeah, Moyo. that's yeah. very true. Yeah, no problem. And, now I have the time. And, to and Derek, everywhere. very and uh, uh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. He, you, you insinuated that he only went to visit the last person <laughs> in his conversation. Maybe the last I, person I don't forgive you on his behalf. So no, right? <laughs> visiting Salim is talking about wealth creation. And to you, you are, you are. Thank you so much for joining us. That is all. We had time for good morning. God bless you. <laughs>